today we're gonna do something really cool. We're gonna go fishing in Guam with a gentleman named Tom, and this is his boat, the Magic Cat. So Murphy's Law, guys, uh, we're about to launch, and there's a problem with the drop mechanism in one of the motors. Taking the boat out of the water so we could see what's wrong with the engine to try and drop it. Um, specifically, Jerry is helping Tom out. Ford F-150 four-wheel drive pulling this thing out, no problem. And then once it's fixed, we're gonna drop it back in there. Okay, while we get the motor drop, let's just talk about how beautiful Guam is. This landscape is phenomenal. The teal water is crystal clear. Pollution has just not reached this part of the Pacific, and there's a lot of things to do here. Water sports, as you can see, these guys are on jet skis. There's fishing, there's paddle boarding, there's surfing, all sorts of really cool water activities. Also, check out the landscape. It's kind of like Hawaii. Mountainous jungles, all sorts of really cool streams and rivers that you can go explore. Uh, I really enjoy the nature in Guam. Got the engine running thanks to Tom and Jeremy. Ready? Getting the thing out. This is Jeremy. Tom's just driving it out of the marina. Good trip, man. Thanks man. We're gonna catch some big fish. All right so this is the plan. We're gonna have to be trolling five lines and so you always put the long line out first and bring it in last to avoid tangling as, as you put the subsequent lines out. Okay. And so this longest one is called the stinger and it has the smallest lure. So this one is fine for tuna. Even wahoo will hit this. Cut, cut a lot of wahoo on this one. But tuna tend to be line shy and so you normally want to have pretty small stuff because the tuna can be really shy about the diameter of the line. So oh, that's interesting. This is 40 pound steel. And you said 40 pound? Yes, yeah, 40 pound braided steel. You have to use steel because we're always at risk of catching wahoo, and wahoo have unbelievably sharp teeth. And so but you don't need more than 40 pounds of steel. They're not gonna cut through it, and it is essentially invisible to them. Uh -huh. A human ophthalmologist, who was also a sport fisherman, did some work about 15 years ago where he caught a bunch of these fish and he used his instruments to measure the refractile ability of game fish. And he did marlin and tuna and mahi and wahoo and found that none of them could resolve lines diameter smaller than about 20 pound monofilament, 20 pound test monofilament. Okay. And so this line is smaller than that, so it's completely invisible to them. It's like if I were to hold a hair up in front of you, you could see it. And if I were to back off about 50 feet and say, am I holding a hair? You wouldn't be able to tell because your eyes can't resolve that human hair at 50 feet. Yeah. But an ocean bird could. The kind of birds we're going to see out here today would be able to tell absolutely whether that hair was there or not. Oh, Humans cool. have really good eyes compared to most of the rest of the animal kingdom, but not near as good as those shorebirds. No, that's... You guys are really technical about this, and that's awesome. I never heard all that about the fish eyeballs and ophthalmologists. That's amazing. That is quite, yeah, that is quite amazing. I think this video is going to teach people a lot about fishing once I put it out, because that's, yeah, I that's very I technical. Look that up, man. That's crazy. Yeah. There you guys go, Mr. Tom, giving you some knowledge about fishing, things that I have never heard before. Um, pretty amazing stuff. We're going to have five lures, as you can tell. He's setting them up right now. Uh, and apparently we're about in a place where it's 700 feet deep right off the uh, coast of Guam here. So, yeah, let's keep going. So now that we know what fish can and cannot see in the water, I just also wanted to cover how beautiful it is out here in Guam. And also, please keep in mind that we're right next to the Marianas Trench, which is the deepest known part of the ocean. I mean, seriously, 36,000 feet. Where you see the boat right now, that's about 600 feet. If we moved a few hundred feet down offshore, that would be 1,500 and so forth until it drops into the abyss. These oh, that's a Marlin lure. Much larger 
and they have much larger hooks. So octopus. you can see, it takes a lot to drive this hook in. So Holy yeah, you're gonna have your drag set really tight to drive that hook in. Oh and you can see God. that, you can see this is a 12 volt hook. You can see I've put that thing down a little bit yeah. to try to help it to penetrate. Sometimes I take that barb off completely. And these are called soft head lures. And if you feel them, they're, they're quite soft. Oh yeah. The reason for that is Marlin love to come up Okay, look at your fathometer there, top left. You're at 209, yeah. so just ease out to a little bit deeper water. All right. Marlin love to come up and they stun their bait. They come up and they quack it with their bill and stun it and then eat it. Yeah, yeah, that's what Jerry was telling me. They like to stun it and then come from the side Correct. and then catch it. Okay, the, the beauty of this, when they whack this thing, it feels like a fish. Uh-huh. It doesn't feel like a... And, you know, when you're using these harder lures, when they whack those things in the head, they know some, it's not a sometimes fish. they take off. They go, uh-oh, that's not it. They don't come uh, back and hit again. But a lot of times, they'll come hit these things over and over and over again. Nice. Until they think, okay, that's sufficiently whacked, and then they eat it. Uh, so one of the big attractions here in Guam is a really cool place. It's a scenic viewpoint to the ocean called Two Lovers Point. And there's a legend where these two lovers, you know, Romeo and Juliet story, um, ran away for their love and ended up jumping off of that together so that's why it's called two lovers point uh and as you can tell it's a pretty far drop it's the biggest cliff face here on the island uh and there's a cave underneath it and on the other side there there's a uh, bay and that's where my hotel is so i've been swimming from my hotel down to the edge of the reef and then all up under the cave here at lovers point it's pretty nice so we're gonna just the, it's funny how shallow it is over there but how deep it is right here it's like 500 feet uh, so we're gonna drop some hooks here and see if we can catch something next to Two Lovers Point. Haven't caught anything yet. Let's see. All right, so we're switching from trolling to bottom fishing because trolling wasn't working. Check this out. That's an electric 500 feet. So this is in meters. We're down at 100 meters so far. And we got squid on the line. Yeah. Got about a pound and a half of lead weight on there. That's so cool how it shows you that. Yeah, how much yeah. is a rig like this? I've never seen an electric one. The reel's 950. How much is the line? Well, not so much, but I mean, it, it's braid. So that's probably $30 worth of braid, something like that. Did we get a bite? No, oh, okay. we just hit bottom. So all you do is you just bounce it up and down off the bottom. I've got little glow lights down there because it's pretty dark down there at 500 feet. And those glow lights are enough to illuminate the baits. And the fish can see those lights and are interested and come over and look. And then the, those little glow lights illuminate the baits. We're at 218 meters. Okay. There we go. We got a red line. 20 meters. So you, you'll be up soon. I can see something. Okay, go easy. Oh, okay. oh you got two. Oh, two there we two go. little guys. Emperor. This is a close relative of the long nose. He just doesn't have a long nose. But otherwise, they're colored the same. But he doesn't have a long nose. And I'll show you why he's called a red gill emperor. We're going to get him on the boat here. But if you look here, there's a little red spot. Man, he doesn't have it. This could be Maybe a long a nose. Baby. I think this is a baby long nose. Because <laughs> nice. they normally have a little red spot there on their gills. Yeah, like on the outside? Uh, yeah, right here. Right there on the gill plate, there used to be a little red spot. This guy didn't have it. Let's see about his buddy. <laughs> now, I think these, these could be long nose emperors. Yeah. Yeah, they're just not long. These, these are just small and they're not long yet. But. Long those I tell you, when those are bigger, they're good. Oh, so we just ended up catching two small fish, but still, pretty good trip. I mean, why are we out here? To enjoy the ocean, to learn a lot about fishing, to spread the greatness, and then get ready for the next turnaround when we may catch a 400 pound marlin. But some weather was approaching, so we had to pull back. All right, we got some weather moving in. We didn't catch any marlin today, but maybe the next time. Anyway, it's good to spread some knowledge about fishing with you guys out here in Guam. Catch us again for the next one on Driving Time.